Learning to weld isn't as scary as you might think. With the right machine and a couple of basic tips to get you started, pretty much anyone can weld. That's a really cool thing about it. Today we're going to actually be asking an industry expert about the right welders and some basic techniques so you can go from never ever welded anything in your life before to be able to lay OK welds all within five minutes. Make sure you keep watching until the end because we've got the ultimate welding prize pack to give away. That includes everything you need to help you get started with welding. There are several different types of welding, but the three most common, and this machine can do them all, stick, MIG, and of course, TIG welding. First up, we've got the old stick welder. Now, you probably saw your old man weld with this. Um, this is the first thing I actually welded with way back in the day. Stick welding is good for welding outdoors or in wind, as you don't need gas. It's also very portable and easy to take to a job without needing to lug around a lot of gear. But it can be hard to strike an arc and the quality of the weld depends heavily on the experience of the operator, so they can be a bit trickier to get right. Next up, you've got MIG welding. Now, this is a great all-rounder and probably the best way to get a nice, neat weld, especially when you set your machine up right. MIG automatically adds the metal wire itself. It's the best for beginners, and most things you'll weld on your four-wheel drive and DIY projects, you'll use a MIG. You can also use a MIG in a gasless setup with gasless MIG wire in the machine, which is handy if you don't have a gas bottle. Except for some entry-level machines, most MIGs can also do alloy and stainless, but it requires some skill and practice to get right. And lastly, we've got TIG welding. Now, out of the other couple of methods I've just talked about, TIG is no doubt the hardest. TIG is excellent for controlling the heat you put into the job. TIG is ideal for a neat, strong weld and is often used on thin materials or where appearance is really critical. A lot of MIG or stick inverter machines these days are available with DC TIG capabilities as well, which allow you to TIG weld steel or stainless. You can also TIG weld aluminium, but for this you need an AC-DC machine. All those three different types of welding definitely have their place, but without a doubt, MIG welding has got to be the best all-rounder. Once you set your machine up right, it really is the easiest way to get really good welds so you can start tackling your own projects back home in your shed. When it comes to a MIG welder, you're typically going to have a couple of dials at the front of the machine that control your amperage, your voltage and your wire speed. Now these are all the fine tuning you need to set the welder up to do the job that you're welding. So this in my opinion is the hardest bit of welding, trying to set your machine up so it's perfectly right. You get this wrong, your welding will not be good, there's no two ways about it. Now a lot of machines, including this one here, once you open the side panel up, you're going to have a bit of a cheat sheet which will give you a rough guide what to set the parameters to so you can weld the right thickness of steel. So, most MIG welders will have two main dials on the front of the machine. One is volts, which essentially controls heat, and the other one is wire speed, or amps, which regulates how fast the wire travels out of the gun, and in doing so, will also adjust the amperage output. Now this welder here is Italian made, one thing I love about it is it's got one main dial which you preset the thickness of steel you're working with. So in this case, if I was to weld this bit of steel, it's 5mm, I'd just simply dial in 5mm and it would basically automatically set all the presets of the welder up so you're ready to weld 5mm steel. It can't be any easier and I reckon that's one of the biggest benefits of a machine like this because it takes a lot of the guesswork out of it. One of the most important things to consider with any welding you're doing is that the cleanliness of the job has a massive impact on the final result of your weld. Things like dirt and grease on the base metal, paint, corrosion, all affect how the filler can penetrate the base metal. So, spend the time preparing the surface and make sure it's clean before you start. A handy tip is to also prep the surface that your earth clamp is connected to so you can ensure a strong connection. Make sure the surface is clean and always try to connect your earth clamp as close as possible to the job you're working on. If you have a metal workbench, you can also use this as an option if you can't connect your clamp to the job. Okay, Jason, what's the first tip you can give someone if they want to lay a nice weld? Um, where do you start? Yeah, sure, look, it's really important to um, get the angle of your torch right. The angle of the torch makes a huge difference to the quality of your welds. Ideally, you want the end of the torch as close to 90 degrees to the weld as possible. And it's also important to know the difference when you're welding between uh, MIG with shielding gas or using gasless wire. With MIG uh, and shielding gas, you want uh, to be pushing the torch so that the gas is aimed directly at the new weld. And with your gasless, it's the opposite. So you want to be dragging the torch 
um, in the opposite direction. Yep. Um, there's a bit of a saying, um, gasless wire creates a bit of a slag, so if there's slag, you drag. A push angle of 10 to 15 degrees is okay, so it's easier to see the weld pull and also allow for optimum gas coverage. It's another big question a lot of people have is a question regarding polarity. Now, obviously when you're welding, you're completing a circuit. Yep. How do you know whether to have the torch and the positive or the negative, and when you're running gas or gasless, how do you get the polarity right? The easiest way is to just start with your torch yep. and just think with torch, if I'm using gas, it needs to be positive, and if I'm using gasless, it needs to be negative. Yep. So if you start with, with that, and then you can put your earth clamp into the alternate one. Okay, that makes it pretty easy to remember. And I suppose if you get really stuck in, also just have a quick look inside the welder. There is a bit of a cheat sheet in there. I refer to that a fair bit, and um, you can get started, I suppose. Tacking is really important. Remember that you're heating things up a lot, so the job can move around. So tacking helps set things in position before you fully weld it. It also gives you a chance to check everything is correct and sitting nicely before you weld. Another handy trick is to bolt things in place when possible. For example, the pony canopy was a budget DIY job, but we tacked it all in place and then bolted it to the vehicle so it didn't move while welding. And it also meant that when we bolted it back up after painting, everything lined up nicely. And another little tip you want to keep in mind, if you are welding onto a vehicle, make sure you take the negative terminal off your battery before you start welding because at the end of the day, you're using electricity to fuse two bits of metal together. So sending electrical current through your vehicle can really mess up all those expensive computers or around 12 volt systems you might have on your vehicle. Righto, there's a few of the basics that'll pretty much get you started when it comes to welding. Um, next, we want to go through some of the problems you might incur. Now, some of those problems might be because you've got a few impurities, you might not have prepared the surface correctly, or even the settings on the welder might not be right. So, we're going to try and show you what the problems are, we're going to troubleshoot them, and more importantly, we're going to show you how to fix them. The first weld I'm going to show you is without gas. So I've actually turned the gas off, and I'll show you what happens. You can see here there's porosity holes. Porosity holes like this are usually a sign of not enough gas. Turn up your flow or check you've got enough gas. Too hot versus too cold. You can see here with the weld too hot, it almost looks undercut on the edges. Adjust this by turning down your voltage. Whereas too cold, you can see that the welds look like it's just sitting on top of the surface and there's zero penetration. Turn up your voltage. Wire speed, too much or too little. Having too much wire spool from the gun means you'll get all of this excess and you can't keep a nice weld puddle easily. Reduce your wire speed to suit the voltage and thickness of the metal you're welding. Travel speed too fast or too slow. Here the settings are pretty close, but the travel speed is too quick. Slow down with your hand. Handy tip is, before you pull the trigger, run the gun along where you're welding to practice before you pull the trigger. With the travel speed too slow, you can see the weld is bulging a lot. Also, on thinner metals, you can start blowing holes in the surface as there's too much heat. You can see here, the settings are pretty close, but the angle of the gun has made it look a bit messy. Try again with the gun at a slight angle, but not too much. This is a nice weld. You can hear it sounds like sizzling bacon in a frying pan, which is exactly what you want to listen out for. That means you've got your settings pretty close. Now we've had a good look at the MIG welder with the traditional analog dials, I want to show you my beast here. Now this one here is the World Class 210 MST. Now I've literally just been playing this one for probably only a few weeks now and what absolutely shocks me is as soon as you get it out of the box it's got a bunch of um, preset settings so it makes it really easy to weld. I'm going to show you exactly what this Italian made welder can do. We're going to weld some uh, 5 mil steel up and then cut it down to 1 mil steel and I'll show you just how easy it is to get great welds. Well, I've got to say, that's probably my best weld to date. That's two pieces of five mil steel welded together. Now I want to weld some thinner steel. This is one mil plate. I want to weld this together. Now, typically if you're going to go do that, you'd change the size of the wire in the machine. Now this is running 0.8 mil wire. Um, typically with this sort of stuff, maybe about 0.6 is what you'd use. I'm not going to change the wire at all. I'm simply going to dial down on the machine and just let the preset settings do all the work for me. So that's one mil. Let's give this a go, eh? Now 
Well, how good's that? I mean, been able to weld thick steel like this and then thin steel straight away and take about three seconds to change the settings of the machine and um, be able to make nice little welds just like that. I want to give you a couple of other hot tips as well. When you're working at home, what you want to do is get a bit of scrap metal so you can play with the settings on the welder. That's what I do. Basically, just run a few welds until you get it right before you actually tackle your project. And as you start to get better, practice welding in maybe uncomfortable positions because anyone can sort of weld on a bench like this, but some of the projects when you're working on, especially on a four-wheel drive, you might be welding up over your head or in tight, uh, hard-to-reach places. So all that sort of practice is definitely going to make those projects a lot better. When you're trying to choose the right welder for you, it can be a little bit overwhelming, especially when you walk into a store and you see all of those options available. So we've made this simple guide to help you out. One thing you need to consider when buying a welder is, what is the maximum amp output of the unit? As you can see in the table below, the higher the amps, the thicker the steel you'll be able to weld. For the type of work you would typically do on your average four-wheel drive, you'd want a MIG welder around the 160 to 200 amp mark or maybe up to 250 if you want to tackle heavier welding in your workshop. The good thing is most machines in this range run on single phase power, so you can use it in a standard 10 amp power point in your shed. If you want a portable welder, you can take out in the field, something like this 180 MST would be good. For welding mild steel, there's two main types of wire. Gas shielded solid MIG wire, or gasless flux cord MIG wire. Gasless wire has become very popular because you don't need a gas bottle, which means less complication and more portability. Gasless wire has certainly become the most popular for the home DIY, mainly because you don't need a gas bottle. So there's less consumable, less parts. Also means you, if you choose to take your welder remotely, like even out in the scrub, you don't need a gas bottle, you can still weld. Of course, you're gonna need some other bits and pieces um, when it comes to welding. Number one, get yourself some extra tips. You'll go through a few of those, they are consumables. To make them last a bit longer, probably some um, nozzle dip gel. That'll make your consumables last better. Um, get yourself a good couple of wire brushes, come very handy, as well as a couple of good clamps like I've got here, uh, just to hold that job down. Um, this one will also help you weld a lot better as well. These are little arrow clamps, I've got a couple of these. They give you a perfect 90 or a 45. Really good for getting two bits of metal together, hold them exactly 90 degrees and being able to tack that together. Um, also, of course, I find a pair of side cutters comes in very handy. I right now want to run through some of the key safety gear you need to have in the shed when you attempt your own projects. Now, first things first, a good quality welding helmet. A quality helmet is one of the most important bits of gear you need. Get an auto darkening helmet with a decent viewing area and also look for something that is really clear because ultimately that's what delivers you the best welding results. The good thing is a really good helmet won't break the bank. Next up, you want to get yourself a good set of welding gloves. Now, everything you touch when you weld is going to be super hot, so good quality welding gloves are definitely the go. And also, if you like a bit of camping like me, well, they work out really good to grab like a hot camp oven out of the campfire. So, great to take away with you when you're camping as well. Next thing, get yourself a welding jacket. Now, a good long sleeve t-shirt will work, something that's really heavy duty, but a lot of splatter will happen when you start welding, which means hot bits of metal will go everywhere. They'll burn holes in your clothes. I was actually having a little weld just the other day, just before I was supposed to go to dinner with the missus. Um, got holes all through my brand new t-shirt. She wasn't impressed. And um, it's good welds though. And lastly, you're gonna be doing a fair bit of prep work with the grinder. So it pays to have a good set of uh, earmuffs, some hearing protection, um, some good goggles as well, but if you get yourself a good grinding mask, it's actually got a grinding mode, so you can flick a little switch inside here, set it to grinding, and um, it's a lot quicker as well. You can grind and weld with the same mask. Now, when it comes to kitting yourself out with all the safety gear you need, I mean, you can get away with it pretty cheaply. For between about two to $400, you can get everything you need, but my little tip is, get the best gear that you can afford, because at the end of the day, it is safety gear. You want a good quality safety gear, and that way it'll last for ages as well. Okay, it's giveaway time. Now, I've been speaking to my mates over at World Class, and together, we're gonna give away a full DIY starter package so you can do your own projects in your shed like I've been doing. Now, what you're gonna get is you're gonna get one of these World Class 210 MSTs. Now, these are Italian-made welders. Um, it's exactly the same one I run. 
It's valued at about $2,099. You're also gonna get a 350 Pro Max welding helmet valued at 149 bucks, some gloves, some wire, basically everything you need to start welding, start creating your own cool DIY projects. Now to win, it's super simple. Let us know in the comments below what your first project you'll tackle with your brand new welder is. I wanna go through those comments and pick one lucky bugger to win the ultimate DIY starter pack. Well, there you go, guys. Today we covered the basics of welding and hopefully you got something out of this video. Now, if you're like me a couple of years ago who thought welding basically was a bit of a dark art, um, biggest suggestion I can give you is to get yourself the best welder you can afford. Now, in this case, this one really does make it a lot easier because one of the biggest things I found that, that sort of held me back from welding is I couldn't set the machine up correctly. Now, these days with a cheat sheet inside the welder and also a welder that actually gets the presets just right for you, it actually makes welding quite easy. And even a novice like me can actually lay some half decent welds. So that's the best suggestion I can give you. Just go out and get a welder and actually start welding. Now, this little table behind me here, the very first DIY project I made, but of course, it extends past that now onto the four-wheel driver. I'm gonna start to make projects that help me save a few bucks as well, make repairs or even upgrades to my Forby. Now, if you've got some tips that maybe we didn't cover today, make sure you leave them in the comments below because this is, chances are, there's a lot of you guys out there who are actually way better welders than me, not that it'd be hard, and hopefully you can give some tips for first time welders down in the comments below. I'd love to go through those and actually get a couple of tips for myself. But until next time, take it easy and I'll see you around.